Hi, this is Buck Moore, and today I'd like to discuss how to design a soundtrack around dialogue, or the life of dialogue when designing a soundtrack. I'm not sure how to, uh, what, what title to put on it, but basically it's about, um, it's about sound design, but it's about starting with the dialogue first. So we have to start off with the life of dialogue. Oh, hang on a second. Yes, Mr. President. Yes, I'm making a YouTube video. Yeah, I'll call you back, okay. Presidents. So, number one, when you're on set, the main channel, which I usually make uh, channel one, is 75%, okay? So that's whatever it happens to be. It's, uh, it's gonna average minus 12. When you look at the little scale for the audio, it averages 75% up the scale to leave a little bit of headroom in case you distort on your main channel, duplicate that channel with whatever method you can, either on a different recording device or split the channel onto a second channel, like for example, on a video camera, channel two, and channel two set to 50%. You can't aim for exact values because there are no exact values on these little meters and the, the uh, human voice is pretty dynamic. So you're gonna have to look at the average of where the dialogue is sitting. If it peaks just above 75% and goes below it, that's fine. Your backup channel is what's gonna save you if your main channel distorts. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using dynamic control if you're making a film. If you're doing an interview or a street interview or some sort of, uh, like you don't have a lot of time to set up audio levels, you can use automatic gain control, which is essentially controls the volume for you, but for a film project, like a short film, feature film, you want to have the background noise completely steady so that later on you can get rid of it easy. Otherwise the background noise changes and the, the dynamics of the vocals change and it's, it's more difficult to edit. It's okay for a documentary or like an interview or something like that, but not for like a, a dramatic fictional film. So no dynamic control. You might use a limiter on your main channel. Just be careful that you know the effect of the limiter, because if the limiter does something funny to the voice, you might not be able to get rid of the effect. So I generally don't use any effects at all, except a high pass filter. It's not effect, it's, it's an EQ thing. So I'm gonna roll off the wind noise or the low frequencies, because we don't need any rumbling sounds when recording vocals. I'll do that, but I won't do any other equalization to a vocal assuming the microphone is a decent microphone, such as this little lavalier microphone is a decent microphone. Uh, I make sure when I'm recording on set, I get the microphone as close as possible to the actor because if the microphone gets further away, then not only the, you know, the volume's gonna drop, but you're gonna have to turn up the volume in order to, um, in order to make the voice louder and therefore you're gonna turn up the background noise. So the idea is you need the best signal to noise ratio as possible and then the rest of the steps will actually work out really well. If you don't get the dialogue clean on set, you might not get the actor and character the way you wanted it to be and you might have to add automated dialogue recording or automatic dialogue replacement or whatever you want ADR to stand for. But you wanna get natural acting on set as much as possible. So have two different levels, a main level which is high, and a backup level which is, I don't know, 10 decibels, anywhere from like eight to 20 decibels lower depending on, on what's happening with the dialogue on set. Uh, so that's step one, have two channels for any dialogue, main and backup. Step two is record room tone, which is this the sound of the room where the dialogue was recorded so that you can use it in post-production between picture edits of two people talking like you're gonna have different shots. The background sound is gonna be the same. It's gonna be seamless, all right? We'll get into different types of um, dialogue editing and uh, the treatment of background sound, but that's the idea. You wanna have the background sound seamless. There has to be a background sound. Everything has a background sound. In this room, listen. I'm not turning the fridge off for this video. I'm just making sure the microphone's really close to me, but I can use that. I can record like 30 seconds of that. And if I don't like the way my dialogue was edited for pacing, 
if there's gaps in there, I can add that in there and cover up the gaps, and that's called fill. So room tone is the sound of the room where dialogue was recorded, and it's also known as fill, because sometimes you don't need 20 or 30 seconds of it. Sometimes you just need like four, six, eight seconds of it. And you fill in the gaps where there's no tone. So you've got to have some background room tone or fill. Um, and then along with that, this is still step two, record wild tracks. We'll call, them, we'll call them wild lines. Wild tracks you can probably call sound effects recorded on set. If the sound person has time to record sound effects, maybe the director likes something and said, hey, record that chair, hey, record that rusty sign or something. You know, there might be a unique sound on set that's useful in post-production if you have time to do it, but sometimes there's just no time to do anything but record dialogue properly. So wild lines are dialogue recorded on set but off camera. So if the director is happy with all the takes but the sound person anticipates problems in the dialogue, they might suggest, hey, can we record some wild lines? Now some people use the terms interchangeably, wild lines and wild tracks, and that's fine. But just make sure that if somebody says, hey, get some wild tracks, you gotta know if they're wanting you to record wild lines or <laughs> or, I'm sorry, if you're talking to the sound person and say get some wild tracks, you want to know if they're going to get wild lines or wild tracks, so specify. So I call dialogue wild lines. Uh, some people agree with me and some people just, whatever, they, they still use wild tracks. That's beside the point. Get some extra dialogue. This way the actor is still in character and they're on set and you have less need for ADR because they're already in the mood. You get them in a quiet room. If you can't use the room, where the dialogue was initially recorded because they're setting up another shot and it's too noisy, go to like a broom closet or a closet with no echoes. Just make sure there's no sonic signature of the room and record quietly in there. If you can't do that, you're probably gonna have to do ADR, automated dialogue replacement in post-production. And if you're an independent filmmaker, well, sometimes good luck getting the actor back. And when they, if you can get them back, you gotta find like a vocal booth, quiet studio, and then book time for that, of course, and probably pay the actor and pay the studio and get them in the mood again. And then if they're not in the mood you, and they had a fight scene or something, you might have to say, okay, get angry, run around the block, do some push-ups, whatever, get in the mood. So ADR can be tricky for independent film producers. So just be aware of that. Wild lines can save you a lot of ADR. If you can't get wild lines, what I have done in the past is used outtakes. So I find some outtakes that weren't used and I use those as the wild lines. So I just, I need the natural dialogue from the set. 